You have Chevron, right? Chevron looks like it's imminent, about to break out. Uh, you have a name like ConocoPhillips, looks really, really good. So there is. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. So, <laughs> let's talk about it. Okay, so Friday we reclaimed the five-day moving average, which, which was, was was bullish, right? And we, we've, you know, we, if you watch the weekend video, uh, we talked about materialistically nothing has changed. Um, you know, we, we made a case, or at least I made a case, about the last you know, several times that we reclaimed the five-day moving average, it resulted in a second or maybe a third day move. But overall, again, we're in a bear market. I think, again, that's the most important thing. And until we get above the 50-day moving average, I know it sounds like a broken record, but until we get above the 50-day moving average, it has to be deemed as any type of upward bias is you know, just deemed as a dead cat tradable bounce from quote unquote uh, exorbited uh, selling levels, right? That's the best way of saying it. So we reclaimed the five day moving average and all I kept on saying was over the weekend, I really don't think a lot about the markets after I, I, I um, you know, get my work done and try to decompress. But I, all I kept on saying is if we can get a down open and we could trap some shorts on the bottom of the channel, I think we could get a day to run. Remember what you guys were talking about on the video, maybe we could get back to the 10 day moving average. So uh, futures opened up lower this morning and it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect because Tesla was down only a couple of bucks. Amazon was down like five bucks. You had, you know, nothing, nothing was down. I said, all right, this is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. They're gonna sell the market off. They're gonna trap these guys and we're gonna start rallying. Um, and it started like that, right? It absolutely started like that. Um, you know, you saw a lot of things uh, going green. We saw some pretty good uh, option flow. Uh, there was a, a upgrade on Netflix, the upgrade on, on TTD. Uh, Amazon was about to take out the previous day's high. Tesla looked like it was ready to wake up. It was all good. And then the day started, right? Then the day started, um, the market started going up and down and up and down and up and down. And the one thing I kept on reiterating the point was, well, there's a shot that we are having uh, an inside day, which an inside day is uh, after there was a big move, right, on Friday, it was a 4% move on Friday. Uh, it doesn't take out the highs, it doesn't take out the lows, right? So if you look at the chart, it doesn't take out the highs, doesn't take out the lows. Uh, it's called an inside day and that's actually bullish. And when you turn around, right, when you turn around and when, when, the mark, when they tried to sell off the market the, the first time around, we held the five day moving average perfectly that we reclaimed on Friday and we started bouncing. And, you know, I, I made the joke was, I go, don't worry guys, when I log off, you know, around quarter to three, don't worry, the market's gonna go green, everything will be good, right? Obviously in jest, you know, I, I obviously don't know that's gonna be 100% true. And right as I'm about to, right as I'm about to um, um, log off, well, the NASDAQ turns green. The Dow is up 300 points. I'm like, all right, cool, cool, cool. You know, this is an inside day. The market's very, very strong. Basically, everything we were watching from the from the weekend video, we're just gonna watch for tomorrow because they didn't take out their highs. So we're set up, right? We're absolutely set up. And I come back, right? I come back to the office and I look, I turn around and I go, we, we sold off. Here's the good news, right? Here's the good news. If, you, if you're looking at the market from uh, glass half full, right? You could take this day and say, look, we did not give back uh, the gains from Friday. We actually, they attempted, they attempted to retake the five day moving average. They couldn't do it. This is super bullish. The bear is gonna turn around and say, what are you talking about, right? Nothing materialistic said, changed like the, Shapiro, the idiot Shapiro had said a couple of minutes ago. We're still in a bear market rally. We had a two day bounce, blah, 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 blah. We're going lower. They're not wrong, right? They're not wrong. We're still in a bear market. Um, the only good thing about it was when you, when you look at the day today, and, I, and I've always said for a market to be really, really strong, everything has to go higher, right? 
and you saw in the middle of the day some pretty good moves, right, from the NASDAQ. And I said, all right, you know, we're going to get this bounce. You know, you had a big move at one point on Microsoft. Facebook was pretty strong, right? Facebook at one point was really strong. Uh, Amazon went green. We'll get to the pivots in a second. You know, Amazon was fine. Netflix was fine. I said, all right, this is it. You know, tomorrow, don't worry. All good, guys. Just hang in there. Sit there. It's all good. Tomorrow, all these channels we find and it come back. Everything is a lot lower. And now the question going in for tomorrow's session is, well, was this it, right? Was this the two-day bounce? Was this uh, something that, you know, that you got a window. We talked about the window. We really didn't get a day two follow through. Yeah, some stocks did like a Facebook and Microsoft uh, and an AMD, right? But we didn't get it as a, as, as a group. We didn't get it as a tribe. Um, so what's next, right? So I started looking at charts uh, after the close and I said to myself, well, you know, it's very, very tough to get excited about tomorrow, right? A lot of stocks are in the middle of the ranges, as you can imagine. Again, when you get a 4% rally on Friday and a lot of them rest today or the, a lot of them up a little bit today, you're not gonna get a lot of bang for your buck, okay? As far as this is a severe premium day until we got to one, right? And this obviously is the ultimate one that kind of saved, you know, saved my day today because I had a very sloppy day today. Um, really, really sloppy. We'll get to the individual pivots in a second. So it kind of saved my day. Tesla is the only one, we, we always say this all the time, for a stock to go higher, what has to happen, right? We, we said this a number of times, the stock needs to take out the previous day's high. For a stock to go lower, it needs to take out the previous day lower. And this is what happened today in Tesla. It took out Friday's low, lost the five-day moving average, it took out yesterday, and this was definitely the weakest one. Now again, you could call it, hey, this is part of the Twitter deal that Elon Musk turned around and started going, well, you know, there's like 20% of bots uh, and you know, I don't know, and I don't know, and maybe the deal is still on, maybe the deal is still off. I, I know it, it looks like, it, like I said, it looks like he's finding 12 different reasons to pull out. And that's what I said, right? But the point is, it, it's such a very staggering market. It, it was so non-committal both ways. It, yeah, again, the chop factor was definitely in full effect. We didn't get that massive uh, follow through that we should have got today. But you know what? It's not the worst case scenario, okay? Whether you made some money today, you've got a couple of paper cuts. Remember, again, the individual day is irrelevant, right? You, you can't you can't look at your day on an individual basis when you have a 5-7 offsuit and make a, a feasibility study on the whole market, you know, on your overall approach on the whole market, the whole market sentiment, what the market historically has done for the last 150 years. A day is just a day is just a day. And what I got out of today's session was, yeah, you could turn around and make a case you want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt one more day. Okay, okay, I, 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 could, I could dig that, right? I, I, I'm feeling it. I, you could, you know, I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. But at the same time, I started looking at a lot of charts and a lot of names that really got hit, right, in the last couple of weeks, they lost a five-day moving average. So, you know, going into tomorrow's session, you know, I don't know. I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of 60-40 sell bias, even though, again, Technically, the market is telling me, and again, the NASDAQ is telling me that we did put in an inside day, but I'm seeing all these charts, right? Like NET, right? NET that, you know, that went down on earnings, ran up a little bit, lost the five-day moving average state. That's not a good thing, right? Uh, a stock, for example, like Tesla, which is my favorite stock, you know, you can see how much room it has. There's, there's 40 points to the downside here, and if the market does pull, all my attention is going to be on Tesla. Does it mean it's going to go down tomorrow, down the next day, or up? It means nothing until it confirms today's channel. But at least this is kind of what I'm staring at. This is kind of the data that I'm bringing into uh, bringing into the webinar tomorrow. Again, the oil names look really, really good. You have Chevron, right? Chevron looks like it's imminent, about to break out. Uh, you have a name like Conoco Phillips, looks really, really good. So there is bullish bias in a lot of spaces. Well, I would say a lot, but mainly the oils. Okay, so if you're an oil trader, maybe you want to go uh, into into that space. Maybe watch that space tomorrow and and look at a name that is going to be um, definitely going to be affected by the high prices of oil. It's Winnebago, right? All the, you know, all the summer travel, people are taking their RVs and all over the case. Listen, if I filled up my wife's truck, right? And it was like five bucks, five bucks premium. What was it? 515, whatever it was, right? And I filled up my wife's truck and it cost 103 bucks, right? 
I can't imagine what filling up an RV for this summer must be. I couldn't even imagine. So if you look at Winnebago, right, it's kind of playing into that theme. Summer travel, high oil prices, and this is the lowest close in this whole formation. This thing's going lower. So it's one of those cases tomorrow. Would it shock me if things kind of woke up? No, it wouldn't shock me because, again, we put in that inside day. But at the same time, I found enough stocks, right, enough names that lost the five-day moving average again today. We're still in a sell bias market. And if they do confirm, I'm more than happy to play them uh, on the short side. So let's talk about a day. A little bit frustrating. Not the simple... Not, not the cleanest days. Um, I've seen, you know, I got caught in Netflix and I messed up a $15 balance on Tesla and then Tesla saved my day on a natural pivot. Um, I didn't do some AMD and I watched a rally of three. Um, I got some Amazon, on, you know, a, par, a, a partial and ran up 15 and came back in. I missed Roku that went up three. It was just such a weird such a weird ass day, but you know, it is what it is. Look, you're not gonna have, you're not gonna have one of these days that every single day is a heat sinking missile. Everything you do is correctly. You, you can walk on water, whatever you do is phenomenal. You're a human being, you can have a brain fart, you're gonna have a mental, you know, mental blood. Look, you're gonna pick the wrong one, right? If you told me today, uh, you know, AMD, right? AMD, uh, Tesla, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, and Netflix got upgraded. You're gonna go with the upgrade, right? You're gonna naturally go with the upgrade, and naturally that's the one, uh, that's the one that took some money from me. But you know, look, there, there was definitely things to do. I, I don't think there was it, it was a scenario of of not things to do. It's just more of like everything was effing pulling teeth. And you're gonna have days like that, and they're in a weird way more frustrating than just having a clean loss. You said, look, I messed up, I screwed up, I messed up the process, I overlooked some things, get over it, blah, 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 tomorrow's a new day. But when you have a day that goes up and down, 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 you're gonna tell you something to say, look, I can't take it anymore, right? Let's talk about it. So let's talk about this. So Roku, congrats. listen, if you caught this thing, congratulations. It was, it's so... 98.50, uh needs to build. Uh, you know, Roku spiked up. It was not a bad move. And this is a, that was the whole point of like looking at Friday's research and saying, all right, we're gonna have a second day run. So uh, Roku takes out the 98.50, 99, and, and you know runs runs almost to 102, and then obviously uh, everything pulled. Uh, Tesla, we'll get the Tesla. This is what actually saved my day. If it wasn't for this. I would have had a, you know, I wouldn't say a horrible, day, not even close, but the point is it wouldn't have been a good day, right? AMC, I like, right? I kind of like this. It didn't trigger today. Guys, keep an eye on this AMC. Um, it held 1150 twice. I know, I know, I know AMC is going 1,000, 10,000, 30,000. I, you know, I got it. I, in case it doesn't, right? In case it doesn't for all you guys who are trading the other side, keep an eye on this 1150 for the next couple of days. If this thing loses its 1150, they, you know, they came for the June 9 puts. If it loses the 1150, I think there's a shot it gets to uh, 10. Uh, Nvidia has a sneaky area for experienced traders, 17750. It's it, it kind of stopped like 11, you know, 7760, 7770, stalled out and then died. Right? Uh, AMD. I didn't take AMD. Don't ask me why, but I didn't. Don't ask me why. I don't know. I didn't. Uh, 9660 needs to build. They came for the June 100 calls. Uh, here was AMD. Right here is AMD. It took out that 96.60, traded to 98.20. I mean, it was a nice move considering uh, what we saw today in the market. That was actually a pretty, pretty nice move. Um, yeah. So t we'll get to Tesla in a second. We'll get. We'll definitely test in a second. Uh, <laughs> the craziest part about Tesla is the the first trade on Tesla was a, a 751 remount off the open. So basically, for all you guys who are brand new to trading. What a remount is after a stock is strong, it comes into 60 minutes of support. And if it traps, right? If it traps shorts in that level, it squeezes back. So I, I bought Netflix first before, before the Tesla trade. Where the hell's the Netflix pivot? Did I not put it in? I might have not put it in. All you guys on the Twitter feed, you're lucky. So I, I, I bought Tes I bought Netflix opening range, um, opening range highs. It only went up 50 cents. I wound up losing two dollars. Ha 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 ha. But it sucked considering it was an opening range play and it stalled out. So after I lost some money on Netflix, um, I had a 751 remount. So I buy, you know, it goes through the 751 area, establishes a low. It gets above 751. So I go along the stock. It goes up like two, two points or so, not a lot. Because I lost money on Netflix, I became a little more defensive. Instead of using the low of the day, which I normally would have, especially in the beginning of the day, I decided to use break even as my stop. So can you guess what happened? 
Tesla comes in, stops me out, right? Stops me out, I make a cup of coffee in the trade. And I watched the stock literally 30 seconds later bounce $15. I said to myself, okay, I wanna die. Okay, everybody leave me alone, I hate everybody. So yeah, that's how my day was going, right? That's how definitely my day was going. Uh, fortunately, this pivot here, uh, you know, definitely helped, uh, I think everybody out, uh, you know, just kind of salvage the day. Uh, 7.45, if it builds below, can flush. Um, the, even the move down, it, 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 it literally went down 10 points and it went straight down 10 points. But it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that regular pivot on Tesla that goes down, you know, ten points. It's very aggressive. One dude was just buying literally five, ten thousand shares every dollar up. So was, every dollar down. So I was like, oh my god, dude, this guy doesn't want to leave. And after he left, can you guess where, where the stock went? The stock went all the way down to seven nineteen. So I want to throw up literally in my mouth. But again, it saved the day. So I'm not going to be too overly critical. But the point is, this one stood out when when everything was rallying. It did not. I definitely want to keep an eye on Tesla tomorrow because remember, you don't need 100 trades, you just need one. So going into tomorrow, again, the good news is we put in an inside day, didn't take out the low of Friday. The bad news is, eh, okay, we're here, right? We'll see what happens tomorrow. Let's play it by ear. Let's watch some oils. Let's watch the text. Let's watch for option flow that we really didn't get today or anything really notable to talk about for the exception of the AMD calls that came out on that surge into the 98s. But more important, let the market digest. Let it breathe a little bit. It'll definitely give us, we don't need to guess, it'll definitely give us the next way to go. Guys, have a great night, God bless, and I will see you all tomorrow.